what's your what's your coach's name? And and uh, I said, you know, George Pasterchek. And uh, that voice goes, "Come on back here." So I go back into his office, and and Joe's back there, and, and I don't know, I shouldn't call him Joe. Mr. Blanchard's back there, and he's like, "How do you know, you know, Coach Pasterchek?" And I said, "I played football for him." And he told me you were opening up a wrestling school here, and and uh, he told me to come by and see if I could train with you guys for a couple of weeks until I go back to school. And um, so Mr. Blanchard said, "Well, all right, you know." Um, we start training Monday, as a matter of fact, and Larry Lane uh, is going to be our wrestling coach, and, and um, you know, you're more than welcome. So that's what I did. I went from uh, 7 to ten, uh, seven to 9, Tuesday through uh, Friday, and I trained there with him. And, um, again, wrestling was the furthest thing from my mind. I was just there, you know, Larry Lane, Put us through a bunch of conditioning drills and, and uh, did amateur wrestling. That's what it was, was amateur wrestling. We had mats on the floor and the ring was there, but we never touched. We never we never touched it. We never got in the ring. Uh, we did tons of squats, uh, you know, just wrestling drills, push ups and takedowns and stuff like that. Just just wrestling drills, and uh, it was all just to get us in the in the shape. Um, so I was supposed to go back to school on on a Sunday and the, the, the Thursday before, I'm sorry, the Wednesday before, um, the ring guy who also doubled as a referee, and that's something that you don't see now, nowadays, this guy's in charge of the ring slash referee slash, right. you know, that doesn't exist. Guys are, you know, they're not, messing around the ring is beyond some people nowadays. But anyway. I don't know that's the truth. <laughs> so, this guy, Juan Reynoso, walks in, and, and he tells Larry, he said, which one's Rudy Gonzalez? And uh, Larry says, uh, that kid over there. So Juan Reynoso comes up to me and goes, um, uh, Mr. Blanche wants to know if you want to help with the ring tomorrow in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, and, you know, I said, uh, sure, what do I got to do? He said, just be here at 9 o'clock in the morning, and you're going to ride with me to Corpus, and we're going to start the ring up, and uh, he'll give you a couple bucks for it. I said, um, sure, no problem. So I should have been 9 o'clock Thursday morning uh, to the office. Juan Reynoso was there. Uh, we were stopped at a gas station. And uh, it's funny, I tell everybody the same story. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's just what, that's what happened, though. He stops at a gas station, and he buys a case of beer. And we drive to Corpus Christi, which is about 120 miles from San Antonio, and he's drinking this beer the whole time, and, and he finishes the case by the time we get there. And I'm 18 years old. I'm 18 years old, and I'm, you know, I, I was, you know, I was the, you know, quote unquote athlete kid. I was, you know, and so we get to Corpus Christi, the Coliseum they had there. He was able to drive into the building. Um, he pulls a truck up right where he needs to park it at, and he stumbles out of truck. He's okay, untie this and untie that, and take this chain off and take that chain off. And he's sitting there, and he's in, the, in one of the chairs, and he's he's drunk, and and he's you know put that pull that pull off, pull that pull off, put it here, put that pull there, slide that rail off, slide that rail here, put that board, slide that board. You know, and he, he instructed me how to put this ring up, and. Uh, that was that was my uh, first day, you know, doing anything within the wrestling business was helping, and I was actually putting the ring up for this guy. And um, but it was no big deal. I didn't mind. I didn't, you know, I it, I never complained about it. I didn't, you know, and it, it, I was I was there to, you know, I I uh, I agreed to do it, and I and I did right. it. You know, and, well, how many um, years do you have in a business now, Rudy? Since that 30, day, thirty. That was oh my God, the, day, that's, the day I walked that's into the wild. office. The day I walked into Joe Blanchard's office was January second, nineteen eighty two, and um, that's that's the first time I ever walked into the wrestling office. And um, so uh, I did that. He asked me after that night if I could help with the ring the next day, so I did. That was Saturday. Then he asked me, or Friday. Then he asked me if I could help with it Saturday and Sunday, and I did all you know the rest of the weekend. And, uh, you know, make a long story short, I never went back to school. Well, as a matter of fact, I showed up at the office Monday morning 
And uh, when I walked in, you know, the lady at the front at the desk, her name was Charlotte Carbone. She was a very nice, very nice lady. She she um, she was like, "What are you? Weren't you supposed to go back to school or something, Rudy?" And I was like, "Yeah, Mr. Blanchard Endo." And she was like, "Well, we're getting ready to do TV because Monday's here in San Antonio was TV day." Right. So um, uh, she was um, and Joe, uh, you know, Mr. Blanchard, I could hear him. You know, is that Rudy Gonzalez? And, you know, is that Rudy back there? And she said, yes, it is. And he said, come back here. So I go back to his office, and he's like, what are you, you know, weren't you supposed to go back to school? What are you doing here? And um, I said, Mr. Blanchard, um, you know, I took a deep breath because it was a, it was a big move that I was making. You know, I had a, I had a two-year scholarship, and um, I was like, I, I want to, you know, and I just, I, just, I just told him. I just took a deep breath. I just said, I want to learn the rest of the business. I didn't say I wanted to be a wrestler. I didn't say I wanted to right, be a right, You want to go on the bed. That's right. I wanted to learn to write. Somewhere between Thursday and Sunday and watching, um, watching, let's see, who was doing those shows back then? It was Tully Blanchard and Gino Hernandez. Tom Pritchard was a young guy then. He was just breaking in, I believe. Uh, Bob Sweet, yeah, Tiger Conway Jr., um, Dick Slater was here. A guy named Tank Patton was here. Oh, yeah, uh, all the great. Yeah, Eddie Mansfield. I mean, just a bunch of guys that, you know, and I never talked to any of them. I just watched them do their matches. And I, I don't know, something just uh, appealed to me. And, you know, I walked in his office and I, and I, and I like I said, I didn't walk in and say I wouldn't be a wrestler, Mr. Wager. I didn't say I wouldn't be a superstar. No, I didn't say you want to learn the band, all of it. I, yeah, I wanted to know what was going on here, you know, and, and, you know, we're in Corpus Christi and there's 2,000 people screaming and then we're in Austin, Texas the next day and there's another 2,000 people and, you know, we're in Laredo, Texas the next day and, and San Antonio was another, you know, and every place had, you know, you know 1,500, 2,000 fans, you know, right. what's going on here. So, I, and I wanted to know, what was, you know, I wanted to be part of that. Yeah, so... Um, and then at that point, my experience was just set the ring up. So as far as I was concerned, I was going to be the best ring setter up guy that there would be in the wrestling business. I didn't, I had no dream of being a wrestler still at that point. Right. And, and then, um, you know, so Joe, you know, he, once I told him that, he kind of like, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, he chewed me out. He, he said I was giving up a, a two-year scholarship. I was giving up an education. Um, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was being foolish. You know, he threw the book at me. He told me everything. He said I'd never make no money in this business. I'd be miserable. I'd never have a decent relationship. I'd be on the road all the time. I'll sleep in my car. I'll sleep in, you know, roach-infested hotel rooms. Uh, you know, he just, like, painted this nasty picture of the wrestling business. And then, and Charles, to be honest with you, a lot of it, he was right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm getting ready to say what he did was tell you the truth. Oh, he did. Exactly. He didn't. Joe Blanchard did not tell me, you know, well, Rudy, you made a wise choice. This is going to be the greatest experience you've ever had in your life. You know, he just, like, he, I mean, he, he told me, he told me like it was. And, you know, and, I, and a lot of, like I said, like a lot of things he says was very true. There's been a lot of good points. There's been a lot of high spots, a lot of good uh, spots in, in my in the business that I've been in as well, though. But yeah, he was he was just being upfront with you know what I needed to know. It's fine, you know. And, and well, we're moving right along yeah. here. I don't mean to cut you. We got this sort of time left here, but you know it's it's a known fact that you've been in business for a long time. And what I was going to say today with these kids, you see it as well as I do. A lot of them are not, you know, like I pretty much spoken like that too, you know. The truth was thrown at me. The toughness was thrown at me. Like I said, I didn't see a ring for a long time. Man, I was, uh, believe it or not, I was on a piece of plywood with a sheet on it for the longest time. Actually, we bumped out in the backyard for a long time. But anyway, leading up to the next part of my story, everybody knows that you were Sean's trainer at Sean's school. And Jose Lothario, is that, is that am I correct in saying that? Yes. Okay. Now let me ask you, can you give me just a typical day of training with Rudy Boy? Um, every day starts with, and I got this from a guy named Ken Timms, um, the fabulous blunt. Every day starts with uh, warm-ups. Warm-ups consist of uh, squats, 
push-ups and crunches, just warming up. And, and uh, I mean, it's nothing like in Japan where they do, like, thousands of squats, but it, it is warm-ups. And then we get in the ring and we do some drills, some rolls and, you know, bumps and what have you, different. Everything we do in the ring, everything, all the drills and stuff that we do is – it has some kind of meaning, it has some kind of purpose in right. like, what you're going to do in a match. Like, I've seen, I've seen guys where they made, I've seen trainers, you know, wrestling schools where they make guys take 25 bumps, you know, in the middle of the, of the, in the, middle of the ring. And, and I'm thinking, at what, when is, what point of a match are you going to sit there and take 25 bumps in a row? You know, it, 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 it does, to me, it doesn't make sense. Um, so everything we do is, is based on what you're going to do in a match, and, and all it does is just, you know, repet- what I learned through the years is repetition improves your work. That's right. Yeah, that, that's, yeah I grabbed the headlock for a long time yet we got the fact to drop them and moved on. Okay, something else I want to ask you. How did you, you, you now own the school, am I right? Right. How, how, did, how did you get to work on a Sean, and then how did you get to take the school over? Uh, well, first let me say also, me and Sean were never buddies. I mean, a lot of people think that we grew up together and childhood friends and stuff. We were we grew up at the same time. As a matter of fact, we grew up probably a few miles from each other, but we never, we never, we never talked. Even when we got into business, Sean went his direction and I went mine. Um, obviously, Sean's direction was a little bit better than mine, but um, that's fine too. Somewhere, <laughs> Sean. When Sean decided to start a school, he was going to have his back surgery and take that time off and he was, when he was uh, going to have that surgery done. Um, he decided to put the school together, and the first people he, he brought in was Jose Lothario, and because that was his, the guy that trained him, and, Ken, and a, a guy named Ken Johnson. And Ken Johnson was the guy who actually, you know, the truth be known, was the guy who actually trained Sean. Jose was the guy that, Jose was the guy that took the money and, and sat outside the ring and said, okay, show him this, show him that, show him this, show him that. Ken was the actual guy that got in the ring and did all the stuff with Sean and, you know, the hands-on stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, you know, well, Sean tells me, Sean told me because I asked him uh, why he chose me for that in blue. Sean said, well, I'm going to get Rudy Gonzalez to be another trainer. And I, the story I heard was Ken, uh, was Jose was against it. Um, I'm not sure why, but you know, he, he was against me being a trainer. Um, year, you know, later on down the road, I asked Sean why he chose me. Sean said, um, because he had seen me work. Um, I, you know, I was a solid, I was, you know, I was a solid hand. Uh, I knew what I was doing in the ring and I was technically sound. And, you know, I meant a lot, you know, coming from Sean. Yeah. Point, in my, in my mind, Sean could have asked, um, Barry Horowitz, he could have asked, uh, you know, there's a list of guys you know, that he's known in his, in, his, in his career that he could have brought down to San Antonio to take my to take my spot. Uh, but he asked me, and I and I and I hold that very close to my heart. It, it meant it means and here's the thing that he, that, you know, some of the things that we talked about meant a lot to me. So you know, um, when I started training there, I took, you know, this is like the late '90s. Wrestling schools, you know, quote unquote wrestling schools were, you know, old school, old school type of stuff. They get to the ring, be yeah. tough a little bit, take your money, and and uh, you know, be gone. Um, so when we put this together, Sean said, you know, we, we sat down and, and Sean was like, "How are we going to do this?" Because he had never, you know, except for you know the stuff he did with Jose, he had never been part of a wrestling school. So, you know, I, I said, "Well, you know, with Sean, it's, it's your school and." Uh, with you being the position you have in this business, I think we ought to like treat it as an actual school and teach guys and not beat them up and not push them around and not intimidate them and not, you know, smush their face to the ground. I mean, teach them. And, yeah, that's right. Teach them when they want to come back. Yeah. And, and if they don't, I mean, if you, if you put the truth in front of a guy, if you, if, you know, if, if you don't have to beat a guy up, to make him realize that this isn't for him. And Sean would have 20 guys in the class, and all we did was was warm-ups, uh, drills, and then we'd get down to the bumps and the nitty-gritty stuff, running the ropes and running the techniques and all that stuff, and guys themselves 
we didn't push them. We didn't, we didn't beat them up. We never laid a hand on some, a lot of the guys. The guys themselves realized, shoot, this is for me, and they quit. They got out of the business. They left the business themselves. Hard work and discourage the guy real quick. Exactly, and, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys that came to the Shaw School were, you know, they, they watched Raw and SmackDown and, and whatever else was on TV, and that's what they wanted to see, but they didn't realize the hard work. So, uh, some were, some happened where Jose and Ken ended up leaving the school after a couple of months, and and at one point Sean asked me, he "Goes, what do you want to do?" And I'm like, "You hired me on my own. You know, I'm I'm, I'm not a package with those guys. I'm, you know." I went, to, I went to college to be a football coach, so I, I'm not a football coach, but I'm a, re, I'm a wrestling coach now, and that's fine with me. So Sean said, all right, then you're in the band. And I took over to school, and when Sean decided, when, when he redid his contract with WWE, when well, he was going to go back, um, he, he, you know, he was very upfront with it, and he said, I'm going to close the school down. And, um, you know, I already signed my deal with Vince. And uh, I'm going to go back to work. I said, all right. Um, you know, is there anything I can help you with or whatever? I mean, you know. And I was like, uh, uh, part of me said, can you give me a job with WWE? But, you know, I, was, I never asked anything from Sean. I was very proud of what he gave me, the opportunity that he gave me, because it opened, a lot, it opened a lot of doors, and I realized that. Um, I said, uh no, Sean, I'm fine. You know, just when, when are you going to close it? When's the last day? He says it's going to be, you know, April, whatever it was. Um, he goes, unless you went to school. And I, I'll take it. You know, it was, I mean, it was a ring, and that's really all it was. It was just a wrestling ring. He had some weights and stuff. Uh, some really nice well, weights also that he had there. But uh, And, and those, he gave those to me as well. But then a few months later, um, uh, Sean wanted to donate him to the church that he was part of, and he said, "Look, I know, I know what I, I gave you these the stuff and whatever, but and I'm like, you know what, Sean, I never paid a dime for this stuff. I never paid a dime for these weights. As far as I'm concerned, they belong to you. You can do whatever you want with them." And um, so he donated them to the, to the church that he's part of, and, and it was a good thing. And and uh, but the way I got to school was, I mean, he, you know, he, he was going to go back to work for WWE and full uh, full time, and you know, I guess through the through the hard work, I guess, and the loyalty that I that I gave him, you know, in, in return he gave me the wrestling school. And that's just wow, very kind of him. Oh, that, that was a that was a big move that he did. I mean, it, again, it, mean, it meant a lot to me, and it still does. Yeah. So you know, I, I take the school very seriously. I mean, I you know, guys that come to the, the Texas Wrestling Academy. Um, they're, you know, they're not just getting the, the backing of, of Rudy Boy Gonzalez, but they're also getting the backing of, you know, of, of Sean himself. You know, he's, I was the guy that he handpicked to run a school and then that he passed the school on to. So I take that very seriously. Yeah, I know you do. And I'm going to have to turn over here to Alan. But, but two more, one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. Saturday night, you guys are coming to a Timberville, Indiana, and we're looking forward to having you. And I, I just want to give you a little warning, man. You know, I'm your bro, and I'm going to be up front with you. you got to watch this guy, Johnny Richards. He's got you in a mess. He's got some kind of tomfoolery going on. I was going to explain that to you, but you're asking this kid, Chan Stallings, he's a good wrestler. But I'll tell you what, he's about as sneaky and slithered as any snake you've ever been around. But watch those guys, but I want one, and I was going to explain that to you. But I want to ask you about two of your students, which... I've had the pleasure of working with a couple, three times, and managed them one time. The Texas Tornadoes, uh, Galen, and uh, I'm older. He helped me with the one, the one boys, them Jacob. Yeah, Jacob Kilgore. Yeah. Good, good wrestlers, solid wrestlers. And the thing I like about them is very polite and very respectful young men. Well, like I said, Charles, I mean, I, if, if you come if you come out of the Texas Wrestle Academy, you have my name stamped on the back of your head, but above my name is Sean's name, so I don't take any guys on the road, I don't push any guys further up the ladder that don't deserve it, and Galan and Jake were two very solid young individuals, they're, they're and away from the ring, they're, they're, they're good young men, I, I have a, a lot of respect for them, they, they follow in the same footsteps as Brian Danielson as Brian, and Brian Kendrick, Alliance Cade. Um, I mean, you know, I can't say that 
good things about them. I, I, I can't, I can tell you, I mean, they've both been, they've both been around for several years. I have never heard one bad word. And you know, you know how the wrestling business is. Oh, you, you'll hear it, trust me. You know, I've never Tele heard one. Telegraph, telephone, telegraph, telegraph, it'll get out quick. <laughs> I've never heard one bad word spoken about neither guy. And that, and that says a lot about the, those two guys. Very um, respectful young men, very respectful. As far as, as far as your guy up there in, up, you know, up in, in uh, Evansville Saturday, um, Charles, I mean, I, 30 years of the business, I've been with the best of the best. I've been with the worst of the worst. Um, so, I, you know, I've learned, I've learned to keep my eyes and ears open. And um, if, if that guy has any anything up his sleeve, um, well, if you've just I'll, got one guy, you're going to have seven to eight to be dealing with. And you got a special referee, like I said, Al's going to explain that to you. But I tell you what, me and Big Al just might be, uh, we, we, we'll, we'll be lurking in the shadow, so to speak. Right, Al? That's right, that's right, Charles, that's right. Well, Rudy, listen, it's been real nice talking to you. I'm going to cut it over here to my buddy Al, and we're looking forward to seeing you Saturday night, my friend, and you guys be safe coming in. And, uh, hey, man, I was going to come out there with my boys when they came out, but I had that heart attack and I didn't get to, but, uh, I'm coming out that one or next time. I'm going to be able to get one of those, uh, my bring out with me one of those, what is it, 50 pound pizzas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Rudy, here you go. I'm going to turn you over to Big Al. Thank you, my friend. Yes, sir. Hey, Rudy, as you know, you're going up against uh, Chad Stallings on the, on the 11th at Revolution Rules here at the Metro Sports Center. Uh, are you familiar with Chad Stallings? Um, to be very honest with you, I am not, but I think I might have to do some research uh, sometime between now and then. Yeah, uh, he's kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't know, uh, Johnny Richards, which is uh, the head of the Rich Revolution, like, kind of like a group, and uh, I'm sure uh, he's been talking to Chad, so, uh, you know, you got to watch your back on them, but uh, they're sneaky, they're sneaky. But I tell you what, uh, uh, our fans are called NFW Nation. They're, they're loyal. They're great, and uh, I'm sure that, that, that they'll uh, be excited to see you wrestle because I've seen you, and, and uh, you're a great competitor. So I, I tell you what, do you have anything you want to tell our fans about your match Saturday night? I'm just I'm just looking forward to coming up to Evansville Saturday with my guys. Um, I've got the Texas Tornadoes and Alex Reigns with me. There you I'll, go. I'll, I'll, Young man, also, and uh, whatever, whatever goes on. I mean, you know, thanks to you and Charles. I mean, we'll have our, you know, uh, th thanks for the heads up. We'll have our eyes open, and and uh, there you go. And uh, we'll be alert. Okay. Uh, again, I want to thank you for being here. It's been an honor, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing you uh, Saturday night. So I tell you what, uh, you have you a good night, and we want to thank you for being on here again. And uh, we want to wish you the luck. And of course, I, you know, you're a great competitor, so I'm sure uh, your match is going to be a going to be an exciting match, so we'll we'll see you Saturday night, Rudy, okay? Yes, sir. You have a good evening. Thank you, my friend. Thank good you, night. Rudy. All right, Charles. Talk to you later, my friend. Hey, you there, Charles? Yes, sir. What a super nice guy. I I like yeah, he you. is. And uh, he, 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 I tell you what, uh, I'm sure he's going to pretty well uh, be on the lookout for the revolution because I'm sure they're going to be around there because the rich, uh, I think, you know, uh, Rudy Boy, like I said, I've seen him. He, he's a great competitor, and he's tough, and he's big. And uh, Well, let me tell you something, Al. And, uh, you know, I manage Rudy Boy, and so you know I, you know, I can get low down and dirty with DB, and Rudy's right there, you know. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's more than capable of taking care of yourself. But like I said, me and you might just want to be hanging close by if you get my yeah, drift. Yeah. Oh, we will. Now, uh, tell you what, I'm going to update the card for us, Charles. As we know, uh, August 11th, Revolution Rules at the Metro Sports Center, 5820 Metro Drive, Saturday night, bell, special bell time, 7 p.m., and special price is 5 bucks. All seats are $5, bell time 7, it's going to be great. And uh, I just received the updated on the card. As you know, with the Rich Revolution uh, Lumberjack match, Nick Densmore will take off Flash Flanagan for the NFW uh, title, which, which has going to be a heck of a fight. And we got the dog collar match with Johnny Richards headed to Rich Revolution and one half of the NFW Tag Team Champions. We'll take on Nick Iggy, and that's going to be a great match. Nick is tough. He's got Rich's number. He holds a few victories over Rich, so that's going to be great also. 
And then we got the ladies' street fight for the NFW women's title. That's Epiphany, the champion, as she uh, takes on Elite Ortiz, one half of the NFW Tag Team Champions also. So you know Rich will have his nose out there also. So that's going to be great. We have a lot of comments on that match. Then again, we got the last standing match also. Victor Bruiser Lewis will take on the champion, tri-state champion, Bobo Brazil Jr., the last man standing. And then both of them guys right there, Charles, I'll tell you what, uh, that, that, that's going to be great. Both these guys are tough. They don't give up. They don't know what the word quit means. So, I mean, that's, that's going to be an awesome match also. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. You and I watched that one together like that one. Oh, that yeah. Was pretty it, it, good match. Yeah, yeah, Vic and Bobo. Oh, man, oh, my gosh. Then we got the no count out match, the six man night. tag match. Oh, this this is a new one now. Ricky Morton, one half the Rock and Roll Express, is going to team up with SOL as they take on T Boat, Gator McAllister, and Dyer Flynn. I, 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 that's going to be great, Charles. The six man match. Oh, it, it's going to be awesome. Yes, yeah, sir, buddy. I'm going to tell you something. I got a my phone rang this morning. I guess so. I said this morning was midday though. About 11.30, and it was Ricky on the other end, and he, we talked for a bit, and he wanted me to be sure and remind all the good people in Leatherville, Indiana, that he's oh, going to yeah. be there early, he's going to have time to talk to everybody, he's going to you sign go. your autograph, your pictures, so he wanted everybody, urge everybody to get out there early, meet Ricky, it's been a long time since he's been back in Leatherville, he's really oh, yeah. important. Oh yeah, he loves the fans, you know, and he, he's great, the fans love him too. Looking, for to coming back, but he means it. He was telling me that he said, Charles, he said, years ago, he said, I remember coming into the of Kentucky, drinking me a big red soda, eating me a hamburger, and getting ready to go to that Coliseum. Uh, and he said, I'm ready to see all my friends there. Yeah. So we want, well, we urge everybody to come on out that night, $5 ticket, grab Grandma, grab Uncle Henry, little <laughs> Johnny Joe, and maybe bring little Jimmy, and get out there and take your neighbor, you know, Come on now, now. School started. $5, that, that's a deal, man. I know, you, you, can't, you can't beat it. I mean, it's great. Plus, we also, we got more matches. We got the four-way tag team match for the No Limits title. Brandon Espinosa and Ace Hawkins versus the Texas Tornadoes versus the Canadian Kid and Kyle Maverick versus Tempest and Johnny Whiplash. Oh, I mean, you got eight guys in there all together at the same time. I mean, I, I mean, it's, that's going to be wild. That's going to be a wild match. Then, then, then we got yeah, the pinfall. Yeah, only going to be a Stallings. I mean, that match is going to be great. Chad's tough. He's mean. And uh, like I said, I'm sure Rich will be around there somewhere also. Then also we got well, J.P. Lightning. He's a big stinky nose and everything. Oh, he, he'll, yeah. And I'll tell you what, it's been peaceful tonight. He's not here tonight. He's got he's taking care of some business. So uh, it's been kind Thank of peaceful God. here tonight. But uh, oh, it's going to be great. Then, then we got we got a mixed tag match. We got J.P. Lightning and the Scarlet Rose going up against uh, Chloe. Uh, which is a new trainee, and I uh, heard some good things. They said she's really kept catching up pretty good. And a mystery partner, I don't know who it is. It's somebody Rich is picking out for, I don't know. But I'm sure uh, Saturday night we'll find out who it is. We're, I'm kind of anxious to see who that is. Then we got the first round match for the Adrenaline title. Shane Brzezini versus Alex Reigns. And uh, I, I, do, are you familiar with Alex Reigns, uh, Charles? I am a little bit, uh... Rudy, I, I've heard about him. Rudy told me about him, and uh, yeah. Rob Conway told me a little bit about the young man. But that's about as far as he gets. Yeah, that's going. I know that he's an athlete. I do know that. Yeah. And I know he's a tough competitor. But to tell you that I have seen him wrestle, yeah. I'll be telling you a lie there, Albert. And uh, we've got one more match: Daniel Eads versus Bishop. And uh, I've known Bishop for a long, long time, so I, he's he's tough, and uh, you know. He uh, he's pretty mean. He's kind of like up there with. I mean, I mean he he don't know what the word quit is either. So that's gonna be a great match there too. I'm not oh, familiar with Daniel Eads, uh, so I'm kind of anxious to see what kind of match that is. And also, who do you say is gonna be there? What's that, sir? Bishop. Oh, Bishop. Yeah, he's taking on Daniel Eads. Who's that? I I never I I I'm not familiar with Daniel Eads. So I'm kind of anxious to see what that what kind of match that's going to be. Uh, I have to look up, try to see if I can find find anything about him and how he is. Cause that's, like I said, it's, you know, I, I know I've known Bishop for quite a long time, so I know what he's capable of doing. So yeah, yeah that's gonna be kind of Lord, pretty good. We're gonna have a good night, I will, Oh yeah, we'll have about thirty matches that night. Oh oh, Jeez. all these matches here. Plus also, Iron Man Rob Conway will be there with uh, a special appearance, and, and he's got something he's want he's wanting to talk to the Nation about. So 
you know, that that right there is going to be great. You know, that, that's the card, Charles. Like I said, August 11th, NFW presents Revolution Rules. Uh, special bell time, 7 p.m. Uh, special ticket prices, all all tickets are 5 bucks. I mean, 15, 20 Metro Drive to Metro Sports Center. Uh, it's going to be great. Oh, also, Charles, also, the NFW Nation comment of the week comes from Linda Nelson. You know her, don't you, Charles? She's your buddy. Yeah. I talked to her on the phone yesterday. Oh, that damn Chad Stallings and Rich. Oh, hey, hey, she's doing good, Charles. I talked to her on the phone last night, and uh, she says she's feeling better. Uh, she's doing good. She's lost 13 pounds. She's happy about that. She said the doctor. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh yeah, she's doing great, and she sounded so cheerful. And I'm, it's, it was good talking to her. But she wanted to make a comment, Charles. She told me to tell you. She said, "Tell Charles I love him, and I will see him Saturday night." Well, I love Linda too. Let me tell you something else. I tell you what, I thank the world of that woman the night that I finally saw the light. Oh yeah. And so, she told me that that meant the world to her. Oh oh yeah and yeah. I she saw told, the light, yeah. and then I turned to the the the, the, the commissioner, sent back over to you, and she yeah. always been a sweetheart. And I just love her to death. Yeah, she. She's an angel, and she'll be there Saturday. She said, ain't nobody going to stop me from my wrestling. And tell Charles oh, I love him. I'll see him Saturday. So uh, I'm glad you're feeling better, Linda, and we'll see you Saturday. And Charles, again, uh, August 11th, 5820 Metro Drive, Metro Sports Center, Revolution Rules. Special ticket price is 5 bucks. Special well, time, 7 p.m. She's a good woman. You know what? What's that, sir? We want to thank Mama Rich for getting them prices right for everybody else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mama lady. Rich, we love you. She, she's a doll. She is a sweetheart at NFW. But, you know, That's she is a sweetheart at NFW. She's NFW, great. NFW Nation. And uh, oh, she, she's an angel. We want to thank her for for such a great card. We want to thank her for such the prices, the time. I mean, Charles, I mean, what more can I say? Revolution Rules, August 7th, Metro Sports Center, 5820 Metro Drive here at Evansville. I mean, $5 tickets, 7 o'clock bell time. Uh, Ricky Morton, uh, NFW title, women's title, no limits title. Uh, you know, it, it can't get any better. Uh, Tri-state title. You got plus. You got you know, uh, Rudy Boy coming in. You got Chad Stallings coming in. You got you know Gator Dyron. I mean, you got the whole. It's an all-star lineup, all-star card. Rob Conway will be there with a special announcement. Charles, I'm about out of breath and I'm about done. So I tell you what. Is there anything you want to say before you spread the love? Yes, it is. Al. I want to tell you. Uh... I know the NFW Nation knows, but we had the passion of your Uncle Gary this past week, and yeah. you know, we do send out our condolences to you, Albert, and uh, I know he was a fine man, and I just want to tell you I'm glad that, that you're, you're feeling better. I know you've got some fond memories of him, and uh, we just want to tell you we love you, Albert, and glad to, glad to be your partner, my friend. Well, I, I, I want to thank you, Charles, for your comments and thoughts and prayers, and I, I want to thank Mama Rich, and... Uh, I want to thank the NFW Nation for their comments and prayers. Yeah, he's in a better place. Uh, you know, it's rough, but, uh, you know, life goes on. But we'll always remember him. Uh, he, he's not, not suffering no more. And I'm sure he's, he's, he'll be watching Saturday night because, uh, you know, I'll be oh, there. Yeah. And, we're gonna, I'm gonna, you know, it's, it's going to be in his honor. And uh, this love shack here is in his memory and honor also. So uh, we, lo we love him and we miss him. But, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody for... Uh, for all the comments and prayers, like I said, they made me feel better. It helps. You know, friends like you, Charles, it, it, it makes times like this special because it, it, it helps me get through it. So, well, you're a good man, Albert. Like I said, I'm, a, I'm proud to be a part of Love Shack, and I'm proud to be your partner. Uh, I, I, it's an honor, Charles, and I, I'm proud you're here also. And I'm proud to be part of NFW. I love Mama Rich. I, I, you know, the fans are great. So I'll tell you what, Charles, enough of the mushy stuff. So I'll tell you what, Charles, you want to spread the love? I just want to tell y'all one thing now. NFW Nation, grab the babies and pack up the old ladies and be there on Saturday night. Five dollars, you can't beat it. It's but right. just remember this right here. NFW Nation, right. don't fight amongst yourself. Be the fighting to us. All you got to do is spread the love. Good night, Charles. Good night, NFW Nation. We love you. A faded sign at the side of the road that says 15 miles to the left.